Hi and welcome to the Blender for Motion Graphic Artists video cast. This episode is an auxiliary extra bonus episode that I'm sneaking in between episode 4 and 5. This of course is your 3D cursor, the little red and white circle with the crosshairs in it. 3D cursor is going to be used for two really important things in this episode. The first thing is going to be sort of its uh, most basic usage, which is to target where we drop a new object. So to add a new object in exactly the point where our 3D cursor is, we hit Shift A and we get our Add menu. And you'll remember this uh, probably because we were using it for the lights and the cameras. This time we'll be using it for mesh objects. There's a couple of different mesh objects that Blender uses, and I think 3D artists typically use them as starting points. So if you were going to create a person's face, for instance, or a head, you know, you might start with the UV sphere. If you're going to make a person's leg, maybe you might start with a cylinder. So these are, the, are some some objects that we have. There are more, as you can tell, in the in the mesh menu. You can play around with them at will. We're not going to really do much with with them. We're just going to kind of explore how we can manipulate them and how you know I'll be coming from it from the way that I do it. So here's a a, a cube. This cube is made of certain parts. Right now we're in object mode, so we're grabbing onto the whole object. So if we wanted to take one side of this cube and make it longer or flatter or askew, then we couldn't do that. That's not the mode that we're in right now. We're in object mode. We grab the totality of the object. Edit mode, which we can reach by hitting the tab key, or if you don't like the keyboard that much, you can go down here to the object mode menu, and you'll find the edit mode just one up from the object mode. Now, edit mode shows us the components of our objects. A couple of different components to look at, and you can access them all by these little buttons right down here. There's the vertex mode, which enables you to grab a hold of the points. You can also grab the edges, which would be the lines between those points. And you can grab the faces themselves, or what we might call a plane in geometry, but Blender typically calls them the face. Happily, I'm selecting them the, the same way that I select anything else in Blender, which is the right mouse button. I can also move them in the exact same way that I select everything else in Blender. So if I hit G, I can free, freely move that around. I'm going to hit Control Z to undo that. I can also do that in, in a constrained sense, and do G, Z, for instance. Can't go any way but up or down there. Or I could do a G, X. And you get the idea. And I can do that with any of the object, any of the, the components of this object. It doesn't really, doesn't matter. Of course, left button to drop. I sometimes forget that. Uh, so there you go. There's there's editing an object. So now let's play around with this cylinder because you might think, well, it's really similar to the cube. It's not that much different. I mean, it's circular, but how much more complex can it be? Well, let's try to make this thing flat. So we'll get into edit mode, and right away you see our problem. There's no, there's no face here, right? Or, or rather, there are a lot of faces here. So you could do that. You can hold the shift key down and progressively select the entire top portion of the cylinder, and eventually you'd get all the way around the cylinder, and we could then use the G key and constrain it to the Z axis, and now we can squash it down. As you might be guessing, there's a, a certainly an easier way to do all of that. One way, I like to tilt it a little bit. This is a little bit tricky. There's the B key, and B is a, a box mode, a box select, uh, what you might think of as a marquee 
or a um, rectangle select tool, whatever you're used to in your normal graphic application, this is that crawling ants kind of selector deal. So we've got B, we've got these weird crosshairs. Now if I click with my left mouse button and drag it across, the entire place, the, the entire portion that I want to select, and you have to be careful because you're in 3D space, so even though you're thinking, oh, I just want to select this two-dimensional surface here, that is the circle, if I go too low, I'm selecting all these little nodes, or I, I risk selecting all of these nodes, or all of these faces, whatever. So I'm going to be fairly careful in my movement and just kind of select as much of that as I want. And you can see that already I've completely ruined it because, like I said, we're in 3D space. So it's really, really difficult not to select, you know, certain parts of that object that you don't really want to select. The thing that I find is that if we zoom into the area that we want to select, I'm going to hit A to deselect everything, then I can get my box tool, make sure I'm in the right selection mode, and get my box tool, and as long as my as long as the box that I'm drawing touches all the surfaces that I want to select, even if it's just a little bit. See, I'll get all of these and then just a little tiny bit of the of the triangles after this center point, then they all select. So it's not one of those selection tools where you have to make sure that you've encompassed the entirety of that of that selection of what you want to be selecting. It's just if if you touch if your box touches it at all, then it will grab it. So here we are zoomed in very, very closely, and as if I want to get just these three little pie slices right here, I should be able to just draw a box such that it touches all those three surfaces, faces, and sure enough, I get them all. Now if I'm a little bit careless, and I'm intending to only get these three, but I, I accidentally just, just one little pixel into the, another slice, it gets the whole slice. So yeah, I think you get the idea. It's, it's, um, it's a tricky tool to use, but if you really, if you get in on the target that you want to grab, then it's, it's not, it's not so difficult to do. Of course, it will matter also what selection mode you're in. So if I have my line, uh, my edges selection active, I don't care how many of the, f the, the faces I touch, I'm still only going to get the edges. Let's make this flat the easy way. The easier, one way, one easy way to manipulate an object without having to be a 3D modeler and use fancy tools is to open up the transform palette. And that is, of course, the in key. In. That's the transform palette. It's got a lot of different properties in it. One is transform. It actually gives you a lot of different properties, including the object's location in the, the world view gives you the rotation of the object. You can affect the dimension of the object itself. And the difference here is that you are affecting the dimension of you know the entire object, meaning that you're not you're not just grabbing onto the faces and stretching them out or something like that. You're you're taking the entire object and making them oops, making it longer or wider or taller or whatever you're doing to it. So it's the overall dimension of the object. And and honestly that's more often than not that's the way I'm doing my I guess what we can call 3D modeling although I, I really don't like to call it 3D modeling because I'm just not that good at 3D modeling. But I do use the 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 sphere or not the sphere the cylinder fairly uh fairly frequently because it kind of gives you a slightly more, I, I don't know if organic is the right word, but it kind of gives you, it gives you something other than just a bunch of squares. You know, I mean, if it's, if it's just a square against a, uh, on your screen and there's no sense of, I don't know, edge or, or dynamic edge, then it, it doesn't look quite as interesting in my opinion. So I'm, I'm, I'm often using the, the cylinder and then I squash it down with my Z dimension control and that generally works out pretty well for me. So you can give that a shot. Get rid of that.